We're looking at First Corinthians, right? Verse uh, chapter f chapter four, and uh, we understand that in service, responsible service, it is a must that you be found faithful found faithful that means God can come in at any time into the sanctuary like this morning now the Lord came in here how many workers are still standing where the Lord put them that's what they call unfaithful spirit The Lord will come in at any time. How many singers are still where the Lord placed them? It is what we call unfaithfulness. And the hellier you recognize that, the better for you so you can correct it. And when you do correct it, you are going to see what is called divine faithfulness because faithfulness is a character of God is a nature of the almighty God cannot be unfaithful it is impossible you got to ask who he is the Bible said in Timothy that even if we are not faithful. Even when we are very unfaithful in our weaknesses, that the Lord God abided faithful, Second Timothy 2.13, because he cannot deny himself. So for God to be unfaithful, he is denying who he is. So his nature is he cannot be unfaithful. So when you commit anything to God's hand, you will find it exactly the way you put it in his hand. Even better, somebody say amen. Amen. May the faithfulness of God be for your household this year. Amen. Oh, you're going to sing a song of faithfulness. And everywhere, every, every person in the scripture who have discovered this nature of God, they are always blessed. They are always happy. Because that's where your joy is. That's what your happiness is. You cannot sink enough of it. You cannot be tired every day. That's what is made is called the house of David. David saw the faithfulness of the Almighty. Hallelujah. David saw it. He sang the song of faithfulness. Moses, Deborah, everybody. No matter the condition you find yourself, you can never, never go down to that condition as long as you are working and trusting on the faithful God. So faithfulness is a character of God. And the more you connect God, the more you relate to him, the more you know him, the more you are imparted by this character. So every, every child of God should have what is in them the spirit of faithfulness because they are born of a faithful God. So in the name of Jesus, I believe God that you are going to enjoy, connect, and grow in his faithfulness. Amen. Say bigger, amen. 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 So let me quickly define for you the difference between faith, faithfulness, and faithful. But let's go back to that first Corinthians chapter 4 and let's read from verse 1 to 5 or verse 1 to 4 quickly. Let's go. First Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, can I hear you louder? <laughs> Mm 
Amen. Amen. Yeah? It's essentially required in service that you are found faithful. I pray anywhere God placed you this year, may God find you faithful. Amen. Amen. I, and I guarantee you, it's going to come in at times you are not expecting. Your faithfulness is going to be judged. God will come in, he will try. So you must be found, found faithful faithful. And that is a must in service. What is a stewardship? Is responsible, accountable, committed service. And whenever God gives funds to faithful, you are due for promotion. Every time Anytime God does not find you faithful, you remain on that same spot. And God will not demote you, but others will bypass you. So to you, you're looking back, but you're in one spot. But every time God finds you faithful, he must elevate you. Anytime God comes and checks the house, and it's still the way you, you are, he's either cutting down the tree, or pruning it and giving new opportunities. So I'm believing God for somebody this year that you have new opportunities. Amen. But that is not because somebody prophesied and, and decreed. It's because you have been faithful a little. You have been faithful in what you think is little. What you think doesn't matter. The ushering, the armor bearing, the singing. What I've been doing it for years. No, it's not how long you've been doing it. It's how faithful you've been doing it. I've been in that church for 10 years. It doesn't matter. How faithful are you to the altar, to the covenant, to the vision? How faithful can you call yourself? And if your husband doesn't think you are faithful, it doesn't matter what you think you are. And it doesn't matter what you have done for this church. If the pastor does not think you are faithful, you are not. You are not. There's no way you can break it. You can glorify yourself. The Bible said every man is good in his own sight, but a faithful man can find. Your faithfulness is judged by somebody, not by you. No, not by you. You will say, I've loved you all my life. I saw you. No, let us say, I know that you have been faithful to me. God, the time you are cheating on the internet, the time you are cheating on the other things, he or she is feeling it. But you don't know. Others will measure your faithfulness, and God will. So, but in still worship, it is important. It's because, why is it so important? Because your promotion depends on it. Your reward depends on your faithfulness in the kingdom. Your reward. You can blame anything for where you are, but listen to me, it's high time you start to blame your faithfulness. or oh, faithfulness. Anywhere we are in Chogi today, plus myself, it has nothing to do with the devil or God. It has to do with our impute to the things that God has asked us to do. And God will make sure you stay in one spot because God is not the kind of person that promotes you because of emotion, no. You can cry, oh God, I've been serving you, I've been in church for 50 years. There are many 60 year old believer, 30 years old believer who are still on the same spot till today and they're even going down. And there are very few who are just starting in one year and God is shooting them because it's not in the hand of God. It's in your faithful character. That's why you have to learn this thing because this year, whatever God has spoken depends solely on this foundation. Gone are those days when somebody are going to be pushing you to serve the Lord. I'm believing God that the character in you will direct your steps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your nature cannot be changed. 
because you are just faithful. You are just faithful. Faithful means you are holding on, holding fast. You are steadfast. You are standing. You are continuing. That is what it means faithful. It means you are depending on something other than you. Something outer. You are holding on to something. You are standing on something. You are depending on something. You are continuing something. You are keeping it. You are keeping, you are holding on to. That is what is called faithful. Faithfulness is a character, but faithful is an ability. Say faithfulness. Faithfulness is a character. Is a character of divinity. Of divinity, which I have in me. Which I have in, in me. Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I will walk in it. I will walk in I it. I will walk in it. I will walk in it. I will activate it this I year. Will activate I will I shall be called the faithful. I shall be called the faithful. It is from faithfulness you derive the ability to hold on, to stay on, to stand on, to keep on. Which means. For you to become faithful, you are going to be tried. Yes, you have faithfulness in you, but are you faithful? For you to become faithful, you have to be tried. It's different from faith. Faith is an action. It's an action. It's momentary. But faithfulness is continuity. You can have faith to get something to activate the power of God because you believe. Faith is an action. Say faith is an action. Faith is an action. It's a response of your spirit, amen, to what you believe or what you have received. That is faith. Faith is obedience. If you, God said a word to you and you believe in it and you have received that word, unconsciously, without thinking, you react. Faith bypasses your senses. Faith, you don't think when you are in faith. Faith is a quick response to the world. Or to God. That's when it says, when you believe in something, you have already received it. The second you believe, your spirit is already in motion. If you have not believed, it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter how you act, it won't work. That's not faith. Faith is your spirit man that received that word, you believe it. You have the evidence in you. Something tells you. It's something called a gutter feelings in you that you know that you know it's going to happen. You just know it that it's going to be okay. So you just don't worry, you're not thinking, so they bring all the symptoms to you. But something is just peaceful in you that I'll be fine. That is faith. Faith is a confirmation within you. It's internal. Based on that, you respond unconsciously sometimes. Before your senses kicks in, your faith kicks in first. You see things, danger, coming your way because you already have a faith in the protection of God, the first thing you will say is, my God will supply. You won't even know that mm -hmm. it's so close because you already have received that word. You've already deposited your spirit. So your faith kicks in first before anything happens. But say, how did you stand? How come you're not afraid when the wind is shaking? 
You're not thinking. You're not looking at the factors. Because if you look at the wind and the factors, you will shake. But because you have faith, you, st your f you stand by faith. You speak by faith. It comes out unconsciously. So you have spent time to receive. That's why faith comes by hearing the word. Hearing the word. Faith is an action that provokes divinity into action. Somebody say amen. Amen. Faith is an action that provokes divinity into action to act for you. You do things that are crazy, stupid, not because you're just not thinking about it. You just feel, you just know, you just obey, you just do. Faith is what you are looking at. Whenever I will say anything to you in any situation, any condition they are, when they say anything to you, they are looking at something. They are. Whatever you are doing, you are saying, you are looking at something. There is something that is your pillar. Something you are looking at that's why you are talking that way. I shall not die but live to declare the glory of God. You are not looking at the word the doctor said or the experience of your brother or friend. You are looking at something. For example, Jesus Christ, they came to him in John 11. And they said, your friend Lazarus is sick, Right? And I told them, this sickness is not what? Unto them. Why did he say that? Knowing the Lord, he had from God. When they say your friend Lazarus is sick, he must have come in. Father, what is that for? And the father told him, that sickness is not unto death. But do you know the wind blew to shake his feet? The son of God said, this sickness is not unto death. That was a prophecy of January. That was a prophecy of December. You are going to be blessed. You are going to rise. What happened? Condition came and said, no. The Lord said, this sickness is not unto death. Why? Because when he was speaking... He had him. He said, I speak as my father speak to me. He had a relationship. He had a communion. I when you say I'm studying the word of God, you are only studying the Bible. You have not yet had the word of God yet. Faith comes from the word you hear personally after studying the Bible. It's a, it's, it's a product of your relationship with the Father, a communion with the Holy Ghost and say, Thus said the Lord, you will make it. You will not be ashamed. You're going to come out. I will see you through. Because you read this Bible, something you have received something, you are happy on the inside. You are glad on the inside. So the next thing that happened is that when the wind comes, things are shaking. Contrary to what you have, are, naturally you are not shaking because you are looking at what you have. Uh, you are looking at the word of God. Your heart is fixed on Jesus. He is the author and finisher of your faith. Your heart is on Christ. But many believers today, their eyes are not on Christ. Their art is not on the word. No, 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 no. They come to church, they sing hallelujah, kumbaya, hallelujah, but their eyes are not on Christ. How do you know? Lazarus died. The Lord will have been shaking and say, oh my God, and turn to God and say, you spoke, and I said, that poor, am I a liar now? And then depression will start in his ministry. And then someone will say, Peter will say, oh, but the man of God said. But the son of God said. What did he say? 
Those who do not believe in what he said came to him and said, Behold, Lazarus is dead. And they told him he's dead. And he smiled. Because I know what I had. This is not unto death. So he was fixated on the world. Even though the condition had net on, 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 on a contrary to what he believed, he wasn't shaking. That is what we call faith. And because of that faith, your response will be in line with what. Let us go and wake him up from sleep. So if you are in your, if you are, if you are in that position, you look at him and say, "Are you crazy?" And that's exactly what Peter did. And they told him, the "Master, he is." They, didn't you hear what I said? They said he is dead. You want us to go and wake him out of sleep? He's not sleeping. He's not sleeping. He is dead. And he said, "Boy, let's go." Why was he so confident? It's called faith. It's called faith. God responds to your faith. But people worship men, but not knowing that what God was responding to is the faith of the men they worship. Let me give you an example again. Go to Matthew 14. Matthew chapter 8, quickly. Shout in the name of Jesus. 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 I receive. I will see. The word of God. The word of God. I believe it. I believe it. Amen. That's all you need to do. Amen. To have faith. Don't say, God, give me faith. Give me faith. Just go get the word. Believe it to the point that you believe it. And that's why meditation will help you to believe that word. Read it again and again and stay. Believe it. Once you have it, you have it. Your spirit man will naturally respond. And it will always kick in first before your mind kicks in. You also will wonder, what am I doing? Why am I at the embassy talking to me like this? What's wrong with me? After you have won the testimony. Some of the things I did in my life, I will say it's crazy. I never planned it. I never thought it. Now that I look back, I say, oh, Lord David, if you dare go to the embassy and do what to do again, you're going to go back to Nigeria. But then, I didn't think nothing. When I jumped from through the story, I wasn't thinking. If I, if I thought, I would never dare it. Who will ever, ever in this world look at the Red Sea and point its stick and say, Red Sea apart? You're crazy. When you are thinking, you are out. The second you hesitate and you are thinking, you are not in faith. Get back to the word. Because your faith kicks in first before your senses. Amen. Hallelujah. The second you are looking, how will God do it? How are you away? No, no, no. That's not faith. Just cry for mercy. Many of you are still running on the fuel of mercy. And that's okay. But know that your faith is not strong yet. No, your faith is not strong. So develop it by getting the word. That is why it's your good to set time aside to meditate. My gosh, I supply all my needs. Some have never believed in that. Some have never believed in that. By stress, I'm healed. Some have never. It doesn't matter how much you cut it. Some have never believed it. And you will never receive it unless you believe it. So they take enough time to stay on the word and read it until you know that this is true. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me carefully. This year, you're going to lay the foundation of your home on the word. Amen. You're going to stay in the word and say, this home will not collapse. Why are you saying so? My husband, you're going to place your womb on the word. Your breast on the world. You bring everything in your, on the world because that is the only thing that will never collapse. It's a sure foundation. When looking onto Jesus, it's the same as looking onto the world. The same thing. You see, when you put, when you get in the morning, everything is so contrary. I don't care. You just keep confessing the word. 
They claim a word. It is written. It is written. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. What you are doing is that you are provoking divine action. Amen. That is faith. Faith is what you are looking at. Let me look at those two stories for you. Dan, I mean, uh, Matthew chapter 8. Read verse 23 to 26 quickly. All right, let's go. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My faith is alive. My faith is alive. And this year. And this year. My faith is strong. My faith is stronger. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God will move. God will move. Say God will move. God will move on my behalf. On my behalf. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. Amen. Amen. Matthew 8, 22, 26. Let's go, let's do quickly. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. The ship was covered with the waves, and the Lord was asleep. The Lord was asleep. The wave was, the Lord was quiet. It looks like nothing is happening. It looks like the Lord is not there. Have you ever been in such a situation in your life where you say, where are you, Lord? It looks like, oh God, what am I doing? I'm a child of God, my minister. What, what is, look at the Lord is not there. You are pray, 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 pray. It looks like nobody's answering. The Lord is asleep. And what did they do? Go ahead. And his disciples came to him mm -hmm. and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Lord, save us, we perish. That is a good thing to do, right? That is called intercessory prayer. That's called prayer from your heart. God, I'm dying. No, God forbid I'm not dying in Jesus' name. God forbid, no. God, they are dying. They are perishing. And they woke him up. They woke him up. They woke him up. And someone will say, oh, the Lord is arisen now. Arise, the Lord. Testimony, we prayed and fasted. God woke up. Yes, that is great. That is good. But it's not the best for the sons of God. Amen. That's not where God wants to take to a new realm where faith is so dynamic. It's okay to pray and ask him to wake up when you're about to go. That's okay to pray and fast. Then the last response to them to have been, thank God you woke me up. Thank God you woke me up. Wonderful son of God. You just woke me up. You, 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 you believed in me. No, 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 no. That was not his response. How did he respond to them? And he said unto them, why? Yes. Eh? Where are you what? Fear for, which means all the while they were crying. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was motivating their cry? The foundation of that prayer was fear. The foundation of that prayer and fasting was fear. That is how Job lived his life. Job said, "The things I greatly fear has come upon me." He said, "That which I was afraid of has come to me." He said, "I was never in safety." He said, I never took my rest. Neither did I keep quiet, but yet trouble came. So all this is why he was offering prayer, sacrifice. He was afraid he would lose them. He had expectation that something would happen, and it happened. His lifestyle was, was a lifestyle of fear. Things will go wrong, so let's pray. Oh, I don't know. So the foundation they were standing on was not faith. It was fear, but they are doing all religious things. That is what the disciples were doing. They woke him up and said, Master, care not that we perish. And he awoke. Let's see. And said, let's what they say. Go ahead. Yeah? Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Why are you fearful? So in our time, because all his journey with them was to train their faith. If you're a disciple today, open the Lord, open to the Lord to train your faith. Why are you fearful, O ye 
of little faith. Little faith is not good for you. Someone say in Jesus' name. In, in Jesus, Jesus' name. My faith is stronger. My faith, my faith is, is stronger. stronger. Oh, you have little faith. Why are you fearful? And then they broke the wind. And what happened after that? Instead of them looking at their faith and walking on their faith, they turned into, let us worship him. That's what people do. When they say, man of faith, do great things, they will rush after them. They rush after. Any church will be full when miracles are taking place. It doesn't mean that who they are faith. The man of God has faith. Amen. Amen. They are not working on their faith. They are just getting the message and the goodness of God. It's still where they are. It's okay. But listen to me carefully. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are supposed to be a leader in the body of Christ. May your faith grow stronger. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, you have little faith. Why did you? Why, why are you afraid? Look at the same experience in Matthew 14. Matthew 14. Read from verse 22 to 31 quickly. Hurry up, place of time. I wish I had enough time to do this teaching. I want to do a lot of digging this year. I'm planting this year. Amen. When you grow, you grow stronger than ever before. Amen. So when anything shifts or shakes, you are not struggling. You are not shaking. What went through the past two years is the reason why God is pushing us back to the beginning. Giving us a new sure foundation. This is not the kind of church that will be shaking because of that wind that blew. It's too tiny, will to wind for this kind of church to be shaken by it. But the day came, the light came, our work was tested, and he didn't stand before the Father. Wind blew. So we're not due for that kind of reward. Never know. Even we look at our work and say, listen, is this the word that cannot be built? Now, COVID is gone now, and they're sitting here back in church. Food is gone now. Well, I got fornication. I saw somebody fornicating. I said, Oh my God, look at her. Is this one in church? But I will not call anybody anymore. Amen. Because you're going you're to waste your life and destiny forever trying to build on a foundation that is not secure. Because any day, any time, it will collapse. Just a matter of time. If you're going to go deeper now, because God is looking for pillars in his temple upon which he's going to bring, build grand deals. So it's not a matter of how full we are. It's about it sending you out solid and sound. Because I may not have done jobs to 10, 10, 10, 10 million, but my 10 million souls are in you if you are solidly built. Hallelujah. That's why I want to take my time to go back to the original, to the foundation. So the beginning, we served this God when there was no money, no father, no mother, no mother, no to support. There was no support. What do you mean? I walked mad. I walked from Scarborough to, 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 to like Ajax every day or every Thursday and every Sunday just to go and preach. My shoe was torn, completely torn, worn out. Go to war when I didn't have money, what would I do? Just, just eat, drink, whatever I would drink. Because what you call faithfulness, faithful, is the ability to hold on and to stand. Somebody say, Amen. 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 Some say standing. I'm still, still standing. standing. After this scourge. After, after the scourge. After the wind. After, after the, the wind. wind. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Still standing. Let me give you, the, the, I don't have time to show that, but next week I will go on and let you see the character of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, or Daniel, or Jesus, or Moses. Moses was called faithful in all his heart. So was Jesus. So was the Lord and David. Look at the character of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Those are the men you call faithful. Oh, Daniel, you are going 
to not have to pray and pray again. We don't want to do that again. So those evil men went to get the king to make a decree. No, God didn't promise you they will not last against you. So you're not focused on that. If you are focused on what men are doing, you will complain to God. Oh, they are not attacking me. No, 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 no. They made a decree against Daniel. The king even made a decree. And the king loved him. And the king made the law that will hurt Daniel unknowingly. And they set him up and they came and they came and told the king, Oh, your servant, none of these slaves is praying three that time times a day. And the king did everything he could to save him. Because he loved him. Thank God for a king. May the favor of the kings of this land come towards you in Jesus' name. Amen. The king was so, so, so wanted to say, but he couldn't break the rules and the law of medicine of the maiden and Pasha. And then so he, won, he had to send Daniel into lion's den. And the one thing, and one thing the king said, he said, oh, Daniel, the God whom you serve continually, he saw a man continuing. Somebody steadfast. Ability to hold on to the word, to keep on serving, to keep on doing, is called faithful. And long before the lion, before, before the lion came, before, before Daniel went into the lion's den, who was there? The angels of God were there. God did not say you will not go to trouble. He said you will find me there. He will not touch you. They won't, it doesn't matter what they do, but your faith is on who that is faithful. You, have, oh, you are holding on to the word that is said. I've seen mama hold on to the word for two years. That's what the faithful do. Faithful are there to hold on. That's what Shadrach Meshach, I bet they can do it too. Worship the God of God. We are not going to do it. Even if our God says he won't deliver us, we will not. And the king was angry and said, you know what? Make it seven times altar. Doesn't matter. And he said, and someone have told them, this Daniel, listen, it's auto. <laughs> this kind of fire will burn your life. Oh. <laughs> and then right as we are throwing them in, those who told them you were burnt alive. One that should have said, no, 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 no. No, God didn't say the fire would not be hot. He didn't say darkness would not cover the nations. He only said, what are you going to stand on in that day? Me or your beauty? Or your salary? He didn't say COVID will not come again. What are you going to stand on when it comes? What's your foundation? But those guys say, our God, whom we saw. And when the king brought them up, you see the king said, wow, the God of Daniel, the God whom they believed, whom they saw. Hallelujah. Faithfulness is God's character. The faithful are those who hold on to his word. Amen. Hold on to his nature. Hold on to his promise. Who trust in his faithfulness. They are the Sarah who judging faithful. Hallelujah. Who remain where they are. Trust in the law. And they will never be ashamed. Amen. In Jesus name. This year no way will shake you. Amen. No sun will shake Amen. you. Amen. No enemy will destroy your Amen. life. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. May your faith stand stronger. Amen. May you be called the faithful. Amen. Amen. And may the God of faithfulness show himself good to you. Amen. Can I hear it loud? Amen. 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 Thank you, Papa.